Hey guys, welcome back to Scanline City. Today I have the legendary Sega Dreamcast Agitech arcade stick. Probably my most favorite arcade stick, especially when you modify it with either Samitsu or Sanwu parts. Now, this is a little bit of a special episode because I'm gonna do this mod and show you how to do both, but I'm giving the stick away to the immortal John Hancock, who's a big hero of mine in the retro gaming scene. And he actually did a shout out for me when I had like no videos, no subscribers, no nothing. And that was just such a nice thing to do. So I wanna do this for him. So this one's for you, dude. Let's make this thing awesome. Fight. All right guys, so here's the Sega Dreamcast Agitech Arcade Stick. Now the buttons that you get stock on this are really just not that great. Neither is the joystick. They end up getting loose or sticky or even starting to miss inputs. So I highly recommend replacing them if you want this thing to be really high quality. And it's a little bit of an advanced mod, but it's absolutely worth the process. Now there are many ways that you can do this mod. And again, I don't consider myself an absolute high tier professional modder. I'm sure there's even better ways that you can do this, but I have done a lot of them and they've all came out great. So. With that, let's get started. All right guys, first things first, let's get this back panel off. Now go ahead and disconnect the buttons, or if you want, you can go ahead and just snip those wires at the base of the buttons. So now that we have that done, let's go ahead and disconnect the button harness from the Dreamcast PCB. Now if you didn't do it before, go ahead and clip the ends of the wires where they did connect to the buttons because we're going to reuse this wire harness down the road here. Big word of advice here guys, leave the purple wire that's connected to the start button attached. Also, leave a good amount of length of the ground wire attached to the start button. The start button is really well known to fail. Basically the plastic that holds it in place a lot of times can break. The connections that go to that start button are really weak. So again, leave the purple wire connected and also leave a good amount of length of a ground wire connected to the start button. Now we're gonna set that off to the side and it's gonna stay like that for the remainder of the mod. So make sure you keep an eye on it so it doesn't get damaged. Now let's go ahead and pop out those buttons. You can use a flathead screwdriver if you need to, to just pinch the sides of the buttons and just pop them right out. Go ahead and remove the Dreamcast controller cable from the Dreamcast PCB here and just set it off to the side. We're not gonna reconnect that until basically the very end. Go ahead and disconnect the joystick harness, but hang on to this because we're gonna connect this to our new joystick a little bit later. Go ahead and remove the joystick gate by pinching the corners, then remove all the other parts, and then you're gonna have to unscrew those four screws from the corners. And lastly, just unscrew the ball top by attaching a flathead screwdriver to the bottom of the shaft. The big problem with this stick and many other Sega sticks is that standard 30 millimeter buttons will not fit. They're about one to two millimeters off. So what we're gonna need to do is widen these holes using a Dremel. So we're gonna be using some black and yellow screw-in Samitsu buttons. I do suggest using screw-in buttons because anytime you're widening holes with a Dremel, the screw-in buttons are just a lot easier to work with because you don't have to be quite as precise with getting those holes wider as you would when you need to use snap-in buttons. Huge advice here, guys, is you want to go slow. The art lay over here, while it's great and it's durable, um, it, it really is susceptible to heat. So if you are grinding those edges and you leave your Dremel in one spot too long, you go too fast, it, it'll just shrivel up and start melting and that'll just spread and then you know, you're kind of screwed. There's no real way to repair that. So again, go slow and take your time. All right, so let's do this. One thing I highly recommend is keep a button on hand and keep checking as you're grinding. So grind a little bit, check it. Grind a little bit, check it. Because you want a snug fit. You, you only want to grind as much as you have to because 
You don't wanna risk screwing up the art, you don't wanna overheat it, don't grind any more than you need to. Don't worry too much about the outer edges of the hole you're grinding. You may need to you know, push some little sharp edges that stick up with a screwdriver down or do some manual kind of filing and whatnot because you do want those buttons to sit flat, but for the most part, once they're in there, they should cover up those kind of rough edges. All right, guys, so now you have the buttons in there. As you can see, they're here, but we're not going to put the nut backs on there just yet, okay? Because we still need to work on the joystick. And I think at this point, before we move on to the joystick, I want to address a lot of the issues that people have with the start button. Hey. Hey. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do, if your start button is still at least somewhat working, is just pinch the sides on the back end, pop it out and clean it. Clean the outside, clean the button hole, you know, just give it a good clean and that might fix it. Now, a lot of the other problems that people have is that the plastic pieces that hold that start button in end up breaking or the connections come undone. Now, obviously you could try a little bit of hot glue. You could try resoldering to it. The other option guys that I usually go with is just replace the damn thing. The stock button is about 12.5 millimeters in diameter. So you can buy what's called momentary buttons in similar sizes, say 12 millimeter to 14 millimeter, screw on that nut back, and then you have a secure button. So to do that, make that hole a complete pass through, and we're gonna treat it just like we would any other screw in button, where we have a hole that goes all the way through, and then we just need to find a button that's gonna fit. Now obviously you wanna look for one with a pretty long body so that it can pass all the way through the hole and give you enough room to put on that screw back so they have a nice secure button, especially if you have something on the smaller end like a 12 millimeter. So here is a 14 millimeter button that I found that doesn't quite fit, it's really close. I just use my Dremel and make it a little bit wider, really not much. But then the nice thing is I don't need to add glue. I don't even need to add a screw on back because it already has enough pressure, it's not going anywhere. So now let's get back to the joystick. So the first thing we're gonna do is remove that top plate with the buttons that can remain attached. Buttons are gonna come back a little bit later. We're gonna put this off to the side. So to install any joystick really, either Sanwa or Samitsu, we're gonna need to drummel these standoffs here. We need to get that flat, okay? So that way we just have this square space to work with. So let's go ahead and drummel these down. Okay, so now, as you can see, this guy is flat. Now, in terms of this mod, you have a lot of options when it comes to joysticks, but in this case, I'm gonna use the LS55, one of my favorite joysticks made by Samitsu, and really, one of my favorite joysticks overall. I'd also recommend the Samitsu LS56 and also the LS32. The Sanwa JLF also feels fantastic when installed in the stick, but it does mount slightly differently, which I'm gonna show you very shortly. First things first, to mount this LS55, we need to take this plate off. The four mounting points they use to attach it to the plate are the same mounting points we're gonna to use to attach to the Sega Agitek stick. We have to drill the holes to mount the Samitsu joystick. So to do that is I just take the original plate that it came with. You can use you know, other plates that have that same four corner uh, bolt pattern. The best way to do it is to just use the plate that came with your joystick and line that up. And then I like to just use some tape on the top and the bottom to tape that down so that when you drill your holes, they're precise. If you have something that can reach down through there or even on the other side and mark your holes, I mean, obviously that works great too, but I'm gonna go ahead and just do it this way. So now we are gonna go ahead and drill each one of these four holes. All right guys, so we have our holes drilled. So let's go ahead and install this. I'm going to place it down like this with the prongs where you connect your harness sticking out to the right. So to mount this joystick, we are going to use a number four, five eighths inch screw, four of them. 
And I'm going to also use a washer. Now these are 5 8 inch because I really wanted to get this thing super secure. You can go shorter than this. All right guys, so now we have the joystick mounted with your four screws and washers. And so now we can put the plate of your buttons back over the top of this thing, bolt it down, and then we're ready to wire it. Now you're gonna wanna put that dust washer on that came with your joystick. And don't forget, when you put that ball top on, you gotta hold the back end of the joystick with a flathead, hold the ball top, and then just tighten that baby down to the right. Now we're going to go ahead and put the screw nuts on the back of these buttons. Now, the trick here is to flip the plastic screw on backs basically upside down so that the threads of them are closest to where it meets the button. And that way you don't really need much room and able to secure it onto that button. But the best part about this is you can avoid having to trummel down every one of those, you know, white circles that go around each button. All right, so we got the LS55 in, feels awesome. Samitsu buttons in, feels awesome. Probably the best parts, in my opinion, for my favorite stick. Now before we move on to the next step, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to mount a Sanwa JLF joystick, which is done a little bit differently. So here's a Sanwa JLF without its plate, and you can purchase these like this, and I think it's just called a Sanwa JLF Bear. First thing you're gonna wanna do is disassemble this joystick down to its base. It doesn't quite fit in that square slot that we created. Um, and it's because of these little wings that stick out on the side here. Now you can do one of two things. You could drummel down the actual body of the Agitech to accommodate for that, just some extra area where you can set the thing down. But for me, I prefer to actually just cut these wings off. So now you can see that it fits really nice inside of that little square, very similar to the Samitsu sticks. Now we can take a Sharpie and mark some holes on each one of those four corners where we're gonna end up drilling. Just make sure you have a drill bit that's gonna allow that screw to pass all the way through. You're not gonna actually drill into it. You need it to pass through so that we can add a bolt on the other side. It's important to know that when you add on the joystick PCB on top of it, the solder points of that PCB end up getting really close to those screws. So for that reason, you're gonna to wanna to use very low profile screws. And in addition to that, you can see that there's a little bit of a lip here, a little bit of a circle lip that goes around those screws. Just go ahead and take your Dremel and make that flat because you do want those screws to sit as low as possible so it stays away from that PCB contact point above it. As you can see, now all of these points have been ground down, so everything is flat and the screws sit as low as possible and away from that PCB. Now you're ready to mount the joystick. Simply position the joystick, add some washers and some bolts, and tighten it down. As an extra precaution, I personally like to add just a little bit of electrical tape or something to protect that connection, and I just put it right over the screw, and then put your PCB over the top. And again, I would suggest having those prongs sticking out to the right, just adds a little bit more room in my opinion, and then add your gate. All right, so our Sanwa JLF is in, it's secure, so I think it's time to wire this thing up. Now it's time to start our wiring. We already have our start button connected, and now we need to connect each one of our buttons here. Let's just throw Put disconnects on the ends of these guys and put them right back on these buttons. Let's just get a little bit of wire, a little bit of wire showing like that. Okay, so now we need to attach the quick disconnects. Crunch down on them. All right guys, so now you have all of your quick disconnects. The only one we're not going to add a quick disconnect to is the gray wire that comes off of that button harness. And the reason being is that we're gonna use a daisy chain of ground wires. You can get these from Focus Attack or Paradise Arcade or even eBay and Amazon. I mean, heck, you can even make your own if you like. 
Now that you have your quick disconnects on the end of each wire of your button harness, it's time to attach those to the buttons themselves. I've made a wire diagram that should make it pretty clear in terms of which wire goes to which button. Once that's done, go ahead and plug in your button harness to the Dreamcast PCB. Now it's time to connect up all of your ground wires. So let's start by connecting up each button with a ground wire from the daisy chain. Once each button is connected, we need to solder the start button ground wire as well as the gray ground wire stemming from the button harness to our daisy chain. You can also use wire connectors if you prefer not to solder. In this case, I'm going to solder the gray wire that comes from that button harness to one end of the daisy chain, and then I'm going to solder the ground wire that comes off of that start button that we left to the other side of the daisy chain. And then everything in between is just connected to each one of your buttons. Whether you're using wire connectors or if you're soldering, don't forget to cover those connections with some electrical tape or even shrink tubing if you have it. Now that we have the buttons connected and the harness connected, we can go and start cleaning up some of these wires, maybe add a few zip ties and tuck those wires out of the way so that when we add that bottom panel, nothing gets pinched. Now it's time for the joystick. We need to bring back that original harness that we had when we removed that from the very beginning stock joystick, bring that back and go ahead and clip the wires at the base of where it connects to that old joystick. Now we need to take the joystick harness that came with your new joystick, in this case the LS55, and connect it to the old joystick harness that came with the Agitech stick. Again, you're gonna to wanna to refer to my wire diagram so that you know which wires connect together. Now this wire diagram is specific to the LS55 and most likely many Samitsu sticks, but I would suggest looking up information from the manufacturer of whatever joystick you're using so that you can determine which one of those prongs on the PCB represents which direction. And that way, if you follow my wire diagram, it should make it pretty easy to match direction to direction, down to down, up to up, left to left, right to right. So let's go ahead and wire this thing up. Again, you can either use wire connectors, or in my case, I'm gonna go ahead and solder each wire together and then add some shrink tubing on top of that. Okay, a little zip tie right there. Clip it, clip that. All right guys, so now we have our button harness plugged back in, we have our joystick harness plugged back in. Both of them are routed so that they're not going to get pinched by the top plate. The prongs of the buttons are bent over so that they're not gonna touch anything, so I think we're good there. So the last thing is, we're just gonna plug our Dreamcast cable back in, just like that. Make sure you put that piece back on there. And then it wraps around this guy. Bam. So now we're just gonna put that back plate back on and we're good to go. And we'll test this thing out and see how it goes. All right guys, the finished product, the Sega Dreamcast Agitech Arcade Stick, modified with some black and yellow, some Mitsu parts. Man, it looks great, it plays great. I love it. So it's absolutely ready for some Power Stone, some Zombie Revenge, some Capcom versus SNK2. Best retro system ever made in my opinion. And there's no better way to play it than this guy right here. Have some fun, I'll catch you later. Game over.